fresh, vital. The old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our leaders. We're optimistic as to what becomes of it all. It really boils down to our ability to accept. We don't need pessimism. There are no limits. <laughs> it figures it would be something like this. Our what if, what if this whole time, all the answers that we've been searching for have been right in front of our own eyes? I mean, literally right in front of our eyes. What if the reason we don't see and understand because we're not actually looking with our eyes. We're not hearing with our ears, just like Jesus told us to do. What if the very nature of God's creation is shown through the anatomy of our own bodies? You know, I've been studying the flat earth for roughly about half a year now. I mean, it's been interesting and looking at different things, but recently I've come across some information that really kind of makes me wonder if the truth isn't in between, in between the globe and the actual flat earth. I did a video on creation and I was talking about the torus and the vortex. Little did I realize the answer was staring me right in front of my face the whole time and I didn't even realize it. In this next picture, I want to show you a picture of what we perceive as the flat earth. And then we have a picture of the globe, which pretty much is what everybody thinks we live on. But what if I were to tell you it might look something more like this? And now, what if I told you the answer was literally right here? What if we are living on top of the lens? The firmament is the crystalline sky around us, the eye wall and what is under the lens that we live on is the underworld and what happens if we take and flip this lens upside down what shape do we see underneath this is what's really surprising we have the horns the crescent moon those are the symbols that we see all over the place in ancient uniform and Babylonian tablets and Egyptian, that third celestial object. What if that is the origin of the black sun, and the black sun is what dwells underneath, and it pops out, like Revelation says, when the bottomless pit is open, darkness takes over the sky, the smoke from a furnace. I mean, this fits together with everything in the book of Enoch, speaking of the portals or the chambers the sun and moon come in and go out um, this also matches with the horns from Azazel why they were wearing the horns lords of the underworld um, where they're chained up now and this also perfectly matches the golden mean spiral and uh, all the sacred geometry and I'll show you an animation here showing how this spiral pattern makes uh, this globe or this eye with us that is the plane inside so here's the animation Now you just got to ask yourself, have we seen this pattern being shown to us? And the answer is yes. We have seen this pattern all over the place. Namely, we have seen it in the Game of Thrones introduction. And we have seen it in the sphere, within the sphere, sculptures that are all over the earth. What's really striking to see is... The 
fact that where the center is, the North Pole, where Mount Meru is, the magnetic mountain, we see that there is almost a navel at the top. Could that possibly be where the entrance is to the pit? That could be open, that CERN is trying so desperately to open, that will release the beast out of its hole, and the scorpion creatures, the fallen angels, the demons. I mean, we just look at these pictures, and we can see everything is showing the sun we own in the center. Yeah, we see this depression in these images, this circle in the middle of the sun wheel. This can't all be coincidence, it's just not possible. And I can see how the globe earth and the flat earth can both be distractions if the truth is hidden in the middle. Have you ever heard of the term half-truth? I mean, this is just too striking to ignore. And the more I think about it, the more I'm just feeling pressure to do more study and more deeper investigation into this because I know there's more than what meets the eye, literally. Also, I need to remember what was it that Nazi Germany was so desperately trying to search for at the North Pole. What was Operation Hydrum truly about? Why did we send troops up there with Admiral Richard Byrd? I mean, I've heard that they were searching on the outer rim of the firmament, the ice shelf. I don't think that's where they were. I think they were in the absolute North Pole, in the center. Uh, we go into some of the hollow earth theory and some of those studies that show there's a portal up there or a opening that leads into the inside of the earth. I mean, Nazi Germany and America don't spend all this amount of money for nothing. And they don't keep people away from there for nothing. I mean, you try to go up there at a boat or a plane and you will be met with military resistance. You are not allowed to explore this area. And by looking at some of these ancient maps, we see it time and time again showing this area without ice in some cases. And also we notice that uh, the patterns of this area also match that of layouts for Atlantis. And now we look at these uh, zeitgeist movement and the Venus project. They have the same patterns of this Atlantean city that's built round like that. So, I mean, the connections are well worth looking deeper and investigating more. Now, if we go and look at the uh, 1893 map, the South Dakota Square and Stationary Earth map, I believe we're seeing probably the most accurate map depicted. I mean, this fits the Taurus, it fits the golden mean spiral pattern, and the one thing I think people don't understand is we have this vortex that is in the center that's pushing down that would create our ocean currents, our wind currents, that would explain what Revelation talks about. You know, you have the four angels on the four corners that govern the winds. I mean, I think it's all part of understanding the vortex. Um, we've even seen a very old photograph I dug up and found showing the power of the pyramids from way back in the day, showing the spiral force coming out of the top of a pyramid. And I've almost contemplated wondering if maybe Mount Meru is a pyramid that is in the North Pole. I mean, I'm speculating. I don't know for sure, for certain, but it wouldn't surprise me if that one was there. As we continue looking on here, I'll start showing you uh, an animation here, showing you the num number patterns, the Fibiachi numbers, and how everything correlates into the patterns. You know, we even find the 144 in there, which I somehow it matches up to the 144,000 revelation. I'm not sure, but it's part of it. And we notice the patterns of threes. And one thing I've kind of started to notice is things are hidden in threes. It's like if we take the globe earth, the flat earth, and the hollow earth, and we culminate the three together, I think we're going to find our answer. And I think that's why this information is just pouring out. You know, God's perfection. His creation is perfection. It says it in the book of Genesis that when God created the earth, he saw that it was good. Satan flips everything upside down, like we read in Isaiah.
Surely your turning of things upside down should be esteemed as the potter's clay. I mean, this is how the devil operates. He flips it upside down in order to keep us from seeing the truth. Um, it just reminds me of that one movie that came out called Upside Down. The two upside down worlds that were connected by one building. And, you know, we see this in the movies of the firmament being smashed and these people being freed. And it makes me wonder if the meaning isn't flipped to make us see that we're not the ones trapped under the firmament that God is this mean person and he's this mean deity that's got us trapped in the firmament. It's the ones that are below us, the chained angels that are locked up. They're the ones that want to break out and they're the ones seeking human assistance to get broke out. I think that puts a whole new perspective on Revelations and the pit. I mean, what better way to fool the masses into making us think that we're the ones trapped when it's actually them that are trapped and, you know, they're just fooling the world into getting released, you know, and that's why, you know, these terrible things will happen when they get released because when they're out, they're out and then they're free to, you know, torture people and, you know, as they're called the scorpions that sting and, and torment people for many, many months, as Revelation says. I mean, it's just too... The stuff that's coming together, you just can't ignore it. I mean, it just cannot be ignored. There is a reason why this is jumping out. I mean, there's a reason why I'm making this video and putting this stuff together. I mean, everybody always takes one truth and holds on to that truth and just doesn't look at the other sides. You know, we need to culminate and put things together. Look at the whole big picture. Don't focus on the small picture. Don't take one little seed and plant that one seed and then that's all you know plant more seeds look at the big picture let's all put these interesting items together these ancient maps these ancient theories you know all the ancient texts let's look at them in a whole and look what happens when we put the stuff together we're starting to see how this fits into the bible how these mathematical patterns fit into god's creation we're seeing how satan has changed things how he's blinded us to the truth how he doesn't want us to understand these things. He wants us to be playing around on our cell phones and wants us to be distracted and watch the movies and get mesmerized by TV and take everything we see on TV as truth instead of thinking for ourselves, researching for ourselves. You know, we have the power of the Internet to look and find these things. And the sad fact is most people spend their time on the internet looking at silly dogs and cats and people crashing bikes and whatever instead of utilizing it as the tool that it is a you have all the knowledge of the world at your fingertips to investigate for yourself to find these things out especially if you're a believer in christ and you pray and you ask for the holy spirit to guide you and give you discernment i mean look at how far i've come i mean i've never even been to college and I am learning things at a phenomenal rate because I pray and I ask for, you know, wisdom and discernment from, from God. And the Holy Spirit shows me these things. Anybody is able to do this. It's not just me. It's not just others. You can too. You know, it's all about faith and believing. And God will show. It says in the Bible, if you ask of God, he will freely give it to you. You know, the uh, fear of God is what brings wisdom and understanding, and understanding brings us the truth, which takes the scales off of our eyes, and we can start to see all this unfold, all this truth gets revealed, and we can see right from left, dark from light. Just take a look around you. How many times have you seen donuts symbolized in movies and TV? I mean, one must think immediately of The Simpsons. This is why they're showing you the donut. We live in the donut.
we can start to see the patterns here now of why we're seeing spirals everywhere in movies, TV, and logos. I mean, here it is, folks. This is the spiral. This is why the ancients were scrapping them on caves. This is why we're being shown them now, just like they were shown back in ancient times. Uh, and like I said, just remember, Satan flips everything upside down. You know, this is God's design. This is God's pattern. And it's right here. This is the proof. And what do we see now? What does this remind you of? Take a very close look. What are we seeing here? We are seeing the eyes of the owl. This is where the symbolism comes from of the owl. It's been here this whole time right in front of your faces. I could probably spend hours just talking about the Phi and the different things that go with it with the occult and whatnot, but the main thing is if you look at the shape that we're seeing, do you see the connection? You see heaven, you see earth. Do we now understand what happened when Adam and Eve took of that forbidden fruit when they were awakened by Satan eating of the tree of good knowledge of good and evil? We have the dark eye, you have the right eye that's light, the left eye that's dark, the chokma and the Kabbalah tree. Now you can see the separation that happened from God. The line was severed in the middle. We were cut off. Adam and Eve were no longer able to see the angels and God above. They became flesh, and through becoming flesh, uh, they gave up their inheritance. Satan was able to control this earth. And now we see these patterns. We can see the math right in front of our face here, the separation from God. And I'm going to show you a quick movie clip. Uh, now that we understand the vortexes and the pyramids and the Taurus and pretty much how our Earth is and where we actually live and how we're severed off from God and severed off from heaven, I want to show you something that really just is unbelievable that was put in the movie R.I.P.D. Let's just take a look at that and see if you can figure out exactly what's being shown to you in this movie. All right, now we see that they're looking up the stairs where we have our spiral pattern here again. And they're building the phallus with the X. The X is the missing piece. And there we see the vortex in the sky. They're going to activate this phallus, basically, uh, it's a mockery to reverse the portal to heaven, he says, so the dead will return back to earth and they, it's shut off. And there we go. There's the spiral in the sky. And now basically he's telling her that, you know, some of these ancient things need sacrifice. They need blood sacrifice in order to work properly. So he has to sacrifice someone in order to turn the machine on for it to complete its action. I mean, this is the stuff they're showing in movies. I mean, people watch this and think they're being entertained. I mean, the, the Satan's showing you right here, right in front of your face, his plan. I mean, this is how demented this stuff is. I mean, this is the truth being shown to you right here. This is what Satan wants. He wants that gateway 
reversed. He wants it shut down completely. He doesn't want anybody to be able to go to heaven. You know, this falls in line with what I was teaching about the pineal gland, that, you know, when we die, that time-space flips over in your head, the silver cord is loose, and you, if you're a believer, you go to heaven. And, you know, the fact that what they're showing in this movie here is the portal being closed down, reversed, you know, is Satan's defiance against God. This is 100% defiance against God and against Christ. See, there we have, like, a symbol of lightning bolt shooting up, you know, we see the lightning bolt everywhere, and here we see the portal being reversed now, and now the access to heaven has been cut off, I mean, come on people, they put this stuff in these movies for a reason, Satan just thinks that we're all too stupid to figure it out, that's the bottom line here, but the truth is he didn't account for the Holy Spirit, and for certain people to be able to figure this stuff out, and put two and two together. got to remember here, folks, that Satan and his, his angels were in heaven. They were there when God created everything. I mean, is it really any surprise that all the stuff we see here on earth is a copy of things in heaven? Does Satan not try to counterfeit and copy everything that God has done and created? I mean, the pyramids, uh, all the mathematics, all the symbolism, you know, the six-pointed star, the five-pointed star, all these things were created by God. Satan has perverted them all, flipped them upside down. You know, we can take a look at um, the pentagram. You know, I'll show you a picture here real quick of the pentagram. We have it right side up. We see that, you know, the head is facing up. You know, this is the way that God created man, you know, in his image, you know, and then if you use take the pentagram and you flip it upside down, what do we see? We see the man's head upside down in darkness. So the head up, we have light, and the head down, we have darkness. You have up and down, left and right, light and dark. You, know, you can't combine the two, and that's part of the deception of uh, the chakmas, the blending of the light and dark, the yin and yang, that you can be one and balance each other out. That is an absolute 100% lie. It's one or the other. There is no in-between. There is no melding of the two. You are either for Christ or you are against him. You know, you can't be um, not for Christ and against Satan. There is no line there. There is no gray area. God does not have gray areas. Now that we understand and we look at the earth uh, through this new eyes that we have, uh, we can see where the cup comes into play. Uh, I'm sure you remember this illusion. We see the faces and the cups. Uh, do you see the faces or do you see the cup, you know? Um, now let's go to what was shown at the Super Bowl. Here we see the cup once again. Of course, through the ritual, they illuminated these faces to show the pineal gland flashing, symbolic of being illuminated, awakened. Uh, but what's really interesting to notice is that this cup, now that we understand the torus and the vortex pattern between heaven and earth, let's look at the torus again. Now that we look at the torus, look at the upside down cup where earth would be. The contact lens area, we would be right down there. And there we have the cup. 
This is the Holy Grail reference that we hear a lot in the occult. Now let's read Jeremiah 51, 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Is this not what we see going on right now? The earth becoming drunk on Babylon's wine, drunk on fornication and witchcraft and adultery and every wicked sinful thing we see. I mean, they're building the temples of Baal people. I mean, the world has turned to Babylon. This is Babylon. And we look at the Taurus, we see that this is the cup that is being referenced to us in the scripture. Plain as day. You cannot ignore this. You cannot say that this is all, uh, that this is just, you know, oh, well, it's just coincidence. No, this is definitely not a coincidence. we need to remember with how you know tricky the enemy is how Satan is the flipping things upside down in reverse psychology and um, I just remember an old movie from the 80s called The Gate and you know one of these things that you know has to be known to people is when these things start unfolding in these end times that we're going through um, the mark of the beast the awakening of the pineal gland may come in the form where they will tell you that, you know, in order to save yourself, you have to awaken yourself. And the only way to save the human race is to become a superhero, just like you've been programmed to through the Hollywood movies. And that the only way to survive these these uh, demonic creatures or space aliens or whatever they may say, that these locust creatures are, is to save yourself by upgrading your genetics and becoming godlike to fight them off, or whichever it may be. And this scene I'm going to show you from this movie, it just really stuck out. And here's a clip from the uh, movie The Gate. And as we can see, the gate is op opened in this movie, and the beast has risen out of the abyss. He lays hands on the child's head. And as he's laid hands on the child's head, he has awakened him. And as we'll see here, the child notices his hand and sees that he's got an eye in the hand, which is symbolic of taking the mark of the beast in the hand. The eye is symbolic of the pineal being awakened. The golden egg is now formed. And what we're seeing here is that the, the beast left, left him alone. And now the child is awakened and he goes into his bedroom as he walks into his bedroom, we see that he's uh, looking out the window to where the pit was open, and we see the blackness just flying out of the pit, just pouring out like an open drain up into the sky. As the child realizes something's wrong, you know, there's a Bible verse that goes with this. You know, Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to sin, you know, dig it out. And that's what's being shown here symbolically as the kid destroys the eye, he gouges it out, showing that, you know, he does not choose to take the evil. He realizes what's happening here is wrong. And that's what Jesus said, you know, if your one eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. It's, it's just symbolic that you cannot blend good and evil. You cannot put them both together. You have to either believe in Christ or follow Satan, follow the Antichrist. I mean, it's one or the other. An interesting thing to notice now that we look back at the Taurus. Look what happens when we change this image of the Taurus here. What do we see? Here is the tree. This is the tree that we see mentioned in the Bible tree of life that goes up into heaven, the tree which is Jesus, Jesus' representation of the tree of life. The example of the tree inside the Taurus is showing us exactly what Jesus said in the scriptures. We are to be a light into the world and show the Father's glory in heaven by our 
works down here. Works meaning as you are saved, as we are saved, our salvation, we have works because of salvation. We do works to show that we're believers. And by us showing how we're supposed to be and treating other people with love and caring the way the Bible says to, we are feeding these roots down here. We're feeding the roots and we are growing the fruits upstairs. We're growing the fruits up in heaven. And those are the fruits that we'll be harvesting when Jesus comes down. He says, I'm bringing your reward with. So ask yourself this question. How much fertilizer and how much time have you spent feeding this root system? How many fruits have you grown up in heaven that you will be able to reap and reward when the day comes? Just something that, you know, we should all sit and ponder on. Is it any surprise as to why the company Apple has a symbol of the apple with a bite taken out of it? This again is direct mockery. I mean, when Apple came out, their price was $666.66. Once again, as I say, Satan flips everything upside down. This is complete total mockery. Um, the bite out of the apple is like taking a bite out of the Taurus. It's just a way to mock God. This is also symbolic of taking the bite out of the forbidden fruit, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's symbolic of that. Um, the thing that we need to look at is the New Jerusalem. This is something that is going to absolutely just blow your mind now that you have the full understanding of the Taurus, the vortex, the shape of the earth that could be melding of the three, the globe and the hollow earth and the flat earth, if we put them together we get this whole new pattern, this whole new understanding which has been cloaked and hidden. So let's just take a look again at the Taurus. We see the top, the bottom, where heaven would be above and where an earth is below. Um, we do know that Satan uses the as above, so below. But as far as the satanic reference goes, it's a completely different thing that's being shown. And once again, we know Satan flips meanings upside down, perverts it, gets people off track. Uh, in this instant, we are talking about heaven above and earth below and what it says in Revelation. And if we read, uh, I'll get to the chapter here and quote, put the scripture on the screen. But what does it say? It comes down out of heaven, the new Jerusalem comes down, and I believe it comes down through the vortex, and we have the marriage, when Christ returns, we have the reunion of heaven and earth, the way the Bible says that it's going to happen, we are no longer spiritually cut off from God, there will be no more sin, there will be no more sorrow, there will be no more death, we will finally be back to Eden, where we belong. Now we're going to read here in Revelations chapter 20, 15 through 18. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof a hundred and forty-four cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was as jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Now when we read where he's saying according to the measure of a man, we know that back then a cubit was the measure from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger. John is using this as an example and he's also pointing out that you know the angel's cubit is the same length pretty much as a man what we see now is in the fibiachi sequence we now know what the 144 is as the exact measurement as we will see in this next animation pay attention to the pattern of the cube and the 144 as we see the Fibiachi golden mean pattern, we realize this is infinite. This pattern never stops. And 
what does the Bible say happens when New Jerusalem comes down? Heaven and earth are new. We will watch God recreate everything new, everything perfect without flaw. Satan tries to counterfeit everything, as we see, you know, the spiral patterns and the, the, the false cube and all the stuff. It's Satan's attempt to copy God's perfected work. But Satan's are vastly flawed, because Satan is a created being. He is not a creator. All he can do is corrupt things and copy and plagiarize. And as we just continue to watch these numbers and how these perfect patterns of God operate, we can truly get a grasping of His infinite nature, His divine perfection. In this next animation, I will be showing the infinite vortex and how we can see through the vortex, Fibiachi golden mean pattern, the spiral never ends. It just goes on and on and on for all eternity. Um, also, we can get into the number 42. We can start to have a very good understanding of the number 42. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen, or may not have, but in the movie uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, once again, truth is being shown right in front of your face. Most people do not understand fully what it is supposed to mean. And I believe I've kind of figured out where 42 goes into play. Uh, let's just take a quick look at that scene from the movie. very obvious what we're seeing here. We are seeing basically Babylon, and the computer is, you know, representation of the false cube, and it's giving the answer to the real truth, and we will, I will show you the patterns of 42 in the scriptures, and what is being shown here is that, look, did you see immediately how everyone was disappointed? The computer even said, you're not going to like it, because the answer, 42, is essentially the real cube, which is New Jerusalem, God's dwelling. And that's why everybody in the crowd just immediately gets quiet, and you even hear one guy in the background yell, rubbish, because they realize that in order to actually be part of New Jerusalem, you have to be a believer in Christ, you have to follow Christ. And that is what's being portrayed in this movie, is that these people are looking for an answer to something that has been right in front of their face, but when they hear the real answer, they're confused, because they don't understand the truth of the Word of God. In previous chapters, we discovered the magic of number 5. And in chapter 5, we saw that it divides 360 degrees of our circumference in 222.5 and 137.5 degrees. And that if we turn the clock's hand following golden arc steps, it never repeats its position and it never goes back to the starting point. This way we can put many elements around an axis without having one covering another. Also, if we build a toroid using this property of phi, we'll obtain a golden toroid built 
with an infinite spiral in which no cycle or ring is on top of another, but the toric surface is fully filled. You can enjoy a few minutes of that eternity. Jews 
wear the black cube on their foreheads, which is a gross misinterpretation of what the scriptures actually stated about binding the arm and binding the head. This is nowhere in the scripture that it say to bind a black cube to your head. That is satanic. And as we go further understanding this cube, we see that it is a counterfeit copy of God's cube. And what is God's infinite cube? That is the Tesseract. I truly believe that the New Jerusalem that comes down and as the scriptures state will recreate a new heaven and a new earth and the old things will pass away. The fourth dimensional Tesseract Cube is just that. It is a never ending recreating fourth dimensional object. It is of unfathomable power and it is God's power. shout down to the sky with his voice, you know, you can about imagine what would happen in society. It's all about free will, the freedom to choose. And we will see that Satan will be allowed to manifest himself physically. And this will be the dividing point. This is why Jesus said he will separate the sheep from the goats. The ones that truly choose to believe in an infinite, loving, all-powerful God, or those that choose to follow the idle, worthless shepherd that deserts the flock because he will be cast away into the pit for a thousand years. And then after that, he's defeated again. And then he's finally thrown into the lake of fire. And all those that choose to follow and believe in God will be living and reigning with him for all eternity.
I don't know about you, but I don't need any more proof of my Creator. I don't need any more proof of Jesus Christ. I don't need any more evidence. This is it, people. This is God showing you. He's calling out. He wants you to see. He's coming. And He's bringing the kingdom with Him. He's going to redesign the sinful world, and we get to be part of it. All we have to do is cry out and say, Jesus, Jesus, save me. I'm a sinner. I deserve hell. But through what you did, through your sacrifice, we are worthy now to, to be part of your kingdom. We are forgiven for all of our transgressions. And it's this simple, people. It is just this simple to turn from your sins, to just think, you know, forgive other people for the mundane things that they've done to you. Forgive one another. Help one another. Take care of one another. Reject this world. Reject this physical stuff. Reject earthly possessions. They are nothing in comparison to what is coming. And I don't know how much more evidence a person would need to see this and understand that what is coming will be the most unbelievable, most unfathomable, beautiful thing that we have ever witnessed in our entire lives. And it's only one phone call away. And that's to say, Jesus, I want you in my heart and I want you in my life. Amen. Christians get this wrong. There is no temple that's going to be built in Jerusalem uh, in Israel. If there is one built, it is not the one where Jesus is going to dwell because his kingdom comes down with him. This is the kingdom that descends, not one that is built by human hands. It is the kingdom of God that is built in heaven. As I was working on this video, um, I had a phone call from a friend on YouTube from the Truth is Stranger Than Fiction channel. As I was having this conversation, we were talking about certain things, and I mean, you talk about being shown a sign, you know, as I was doing this research for this video, talking about the hollow earth, the flat earth, the globe earth, and melding them, I just happened to be sitting out on my porch, and I looked up, and I saw what the cloud had was forming, and I took a picture of it. Uh, it says in the scriptures that God speaks through his creation, and I am almost certain this is being shown a sign that what is being studied here and what I'm uncovering is directly from God being shown through the Holy Spirit. In the clouds, we see the shape of the exact model that I've been showing on this video. What the scripture is showing us is that we need to reject this physical world, this upside-down world that Satan has got us all entangled in and mesmerized to. We cannot enter the kingdom of heaven through this physical realm. You cannot awaken yourself. You cannot use any occultic means to find other paths to heaven. There are no other paths to heaven except one, and that is through Jesus Christ who says, I am the way. There is only Christ. I mean, think about it. Where did the model of the Death Star come from? Why did they make one of the moons of Saturn look like the Death Star, which, you know, is just NASA CGI? We see where this pattern is coming from, and it's Satan laughing and mocking us for not seeing the truth that's right in front of our face. He just thinks that we're too stupid to figure these things out and put two and two together. But I am showing you through the Holy Spirit now what God has been showing me. And this is the truth. This is where all the eye symbolism derives from. This is what Satan does not want you to know, what he does not want you to understand, because Satan does not want to see you redeemed. He does not want to see any of us go to heaven. He wants us to be miserable and suffer, because he is miserable in his suffering, because he is never allowed back into the kingdom. So this is why he does what he does, blinding us to the truth. I mean, if you remember the scene in the movie Labyrinth, David Bowie, you know, the old hag that was just piling and piling all the stuff on the girl's back, saying, well, you need this, and oh, you need that, and you need this. That's the way Satan is to us. He just heaps stuff on our shoulders, heaps stuff on our backs, making us think that we need all these things when we don't. All we really need is Jesus Christ. And I just pray that you guys understand, you know, 
And I pray for every one of you out there that's listening to this video. I don't know you, but I care for you. I love you all very much. And I just hope that one day that we'll meet and see each other in Jesus Christ's kingdom that is soon coming. The wickedness and all the evils that we see going on in this day-to-day -day life will pass, people. This will pass. We will never remember these horrible things or these sinful things. For God is coming to make everything new and clean again. God bless you all. And may Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. And I'll just cap this off by showing you the clip of the old hag from the old movie Labyrinth.